this kind of foundational lie uh, in America. I wrote about this on uh, December 29th at HartmanReport.com in, in a piece titled, America Must Awaken from the Big Lie of Rugged Individualism. This idea that we just stand on our own two feet, you know, that we are the, 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 the Europeans who came and conquered the, 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 the West, uh, took America, stole it from the Indians, um, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And that we did it, that, that individual, how to, how to say this, uh, that individuals are the, the peak of society. You know, the, Maggie Thatcher's thing, you know, there is no such thing as society. There's only a collection of individuals and families. For example, here in the United States, one in five American children will go to bed hungry at least one night this year. And for the majority of them, it'll be much of the year. One in five American children. We could solve all hunger in the United States with $25 billion. Which is by coincidence, the exact amount of money that Congress gave the Pentagon more than the Pentagon asked for. Now, you could say, you know, that this raises the question of, you know, where are our priorities? And I, you know, I, I was getting all these Christmas appeals, you know, and, and uh, in the mail and in email and on TV. And, and, I, and I was asking myself, you know, like, why is it that in the most developed country in the world, the richest country in the world anyway, which is the United States right now, and China will soon surpass us. But right now, we are the richest country in the world. Why is it that we've got a hospital on television advertising for donations? When every other advanced democracy in the world, if your kid has cancer, you get, you get free treatment. Why do we have, and God bless St. Jude. You know, Danny Thomas, great work. I, you know, I, I can't say enough good things about them. But why is it that we have to, in the United States, have hospitals, including research hospitals, supported by donations? This makes no sense to me. Why is it that there are over a dozen charities here in Portland that are serving the homeless population, people who are houseless, when in Finland, they have ended it? And in most of the, of the rest of the developed world, homelessness is a problem around the edges rather than you know, right in your face all the time like it is here in the United States. In fact, uh, HUD, Housing and Urban Development, HUD, uh, in a report, a 2020 report on their website, said that homelessness in the United States, quote, is essentially a political choice. We could choose differently. Why is it that we're running charity-funded food banks? When we could, as I said, we could end homeless, we could end hunger in the United States with $25 billion. Why is it that uh, diabetics in the United States are paying 500 bucks for the same insulin you can buy in Canada for $25? Why is it that our candidates for public office are begging for money so that they can go up against Republicans who are funded by dark money? that doesn't happen in any other country. Any other, there, there is, to the best of my knowledge, no other advanced democracy in the world where dark money plays such a huge role and basically owns one of two major political parties. Why is it that in the United States, kids are asking their parents to help pay off their student loans when the, the idea of student loans doesn't even, by and large, exist? for public colleges in any other advanced democracy in the world. I've, I've told this story before. Louise and I went down, we, our, we had a family vacation a couple of years ago to Costa Rica, where we met uh, uh, two of my three brothers and their wives and kids and Louise and I and our kids and, you know, rented a big house down there and right on the coast and had just a wonderful week. And flew into the airport, and the taxi driver driving me from the airport out to this place 
It's about an hour drive. In fact, it was a little more than that. We stopped and had lunch with him. And I asked him, you know, what do you like best about living here in Costa Rica? He was a guy in his, I'd guess, mid-50s. And he said, uh, what I really like the most is that uh, we don't have a military here. There is, no, there is no military in Costa Rica. And so we use all that money to pay for education and health care. He said, I have free health care, and my son just graduated from college. I mean, here's this taxi driver telling me how his son just got his PhD. Free in Costa Rica. Why is it that in the United States we've got a $2 trillion dollar almost $2 trillion student debt crisis that is holding back literally an entire generation of people. And I say a generation because student debt didn't exist in the United States either 40 years ago, before Reagan. If you look before 1980, before Reagan became president, student debt was, you know, it was a thing if you wanted to go to Harvard. It was a thing if you wanted to go to Oxford. But otherwise, it wasn't a thing. I literally, in the 60s, I, I, I knew one person. He was working on his master's degree in math at Michigan State University. He had student loans. He was the only person I knew with student loans. Why is it? I, th I think that a large part of this comes back to this bizarre idea that the right-wingers have been pushing in the United States for years and years and years that Americans want to be on our own that independence is our highest value, and that means we don't take things from government, which is a fancy way of saying that we don't help each other out. Now, why is it that the right is pushing this meme constantly and pushing it in ways that tie it into things like masculinity or responsibility or personal responsibility, one of their favorite phrases? Why are they doing this? Because rich people don't want, because these particular rich right wingers don't want to pay their, don't want to pay income taxes, which might support some of these things. It's really, it comes down to greed. I'm, I'm on these right wing email lists, and I get the, you know, uh, the emails from Freedom Works and a bunch of other right wing groups, and they're constantly talking about, oh, America is becoming a socialist nation, and Build Back Better is the latest step towards socialism. And it's like, socialism is like every other word, right? And it's just, it's really, it's their way of saying, we thought that the cultural consensus in this country is, hey, if you're middle class, you're on your own, sucker. That is how it's supposed to be, they're saying. Now, they have a different set of rules for rich conservatives, Right, one rule number one for average working people is that if you give the children of working people free college, they won't value it, it'll harm them. You need to work for the things you have. If you give workers you know, benefits, if you give them good pay, it'll harm them. If we give people free uh, college tuition, if we give people free health care, it will harm them. If we had a basic guaranteed minimum income, it would harm people. If we give people housing support or discounted housing, it'll harm them because it takes away their motivation to work. This is what the right-wingers have been telling us now throughout my whole entire life. But they have a different set of rules for their own folks. They will also tell you in the same breath that if a wealthy person dies, and can't give all their money to their children so that their children can live, you know, the Paris Hilton lifestyle, that that's a terrible disaster, that that's a death tax, that that's a, an, an opposition to American values. Rich kids should get whatever they want that they don't have to work for. Rich kids should have their parents pay for their college. Rich kids should have their parents buy their houses. Rich kids should have, you know, should, should have money pouring down on them, uh, you know, every time somebody in their family croaks, and even when they don't. And it's not going to harm them because rich kids are somehow different. And what blows my mind is that Republicans buy this stuff. You know, uh, my, my now deceased colleague, Rush Limbaugh, pitched this for more than 20 years on the radio. 
and it's and 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 you get these you know Joe Sixpack union members driving around listening to right wingers on the radio just sucking this stuff up. Oh yeah, individual responsibility. Oh yeah, socialism. It's just amazing. You know, before Reagan, there were no billionaires in the United States. You know why? Because we had a top 74% tax rate. You couldn't accumulate a billion dollars. We also had no student debt. You had free college in, in much of the United States. California was, the entire California uh, system was entirely free until Reagan got a hold of it. And it was the top university system in the United States. We had health care we could afford when we had laws that required hospitals and health insurance companies to be nonprofits, which was the case in Michigan where I you know, lived and did business in the, in, you know, throughout the 70s. And then Reagan came along and suddenly all this stuff changed. It's a big lie. They have been selling us this big lie that humans are designed by nature to stand on our own two feet and be on our own and be rugged individuals. And this toxic idea of rugged individualism has poisoned our country psychologically. And then the people who are living in places where the jobs, you know, the factories got shut down because uh, Reagan's neoliberal trade policies shipped our jobs off to China or Mexico and they're deeply impoverished and their kids are drug addicted and they're, and they're and failing in schools and their schools are falling apart. And what do they say? It's Democrats' fault. How is it that they, you know, that they just don't even know? I mean, Mar Maggie Thatcher, her exact quote, low-income people are casting their problems on society. And you know there's no such thing as society. There are individual men and women, there are families, and no governments can do anything except through people, and people must look to themselves first, end of quote. It's probably the biggest of the big lies that right-wingers have ever told us. And they're still trying to tell us this. We have clean food, we have clean water, we have warm housing, we have safe medications, we have reliable transportation because progressives and Americans historically worked together through government to protect all of us.